Taurus. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well and we have the July forecast ready here for you. But listen, before we start today, I have a couple of messages. We're nearly up at 100,000 subscribers and maybe this month we can make it. And for those of you who have subscribed already and you're wondering why isn't it showing up in your email, well, most of you now listen to your forecast on your uh, cell phone, right? And there's something new here, you can hit the bell because if you don't hit the bell, which gives you all notifications of new um, videos, then it will only give it to you every once in a long shot. Right? So if you're listening right now on your mobile, well, look at that little bell. If you're subscribed, hit it and it will come up. You'll always get your notifications and then you get them right away. Secondly, also, since we are coming up on the, the near 100,000 mark of subscribers, if you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe now if you are a follower. And uh, to celebrate that, I am giving away a half hour reading, a six month transit, which will run you six months. So from July 1st straight through December. So just go to my website, you'll find the link down below and sign up for the newsletter, right? You'll get all the good news there um, from time to time. I don't send them too often, but uh, when you do, I will let you know who the lucky uh, winner is of the half hour, six month transit reading. Also, when you go to the website, you'll see that I have added a call me button. So if you want a one-on-one -on -one talk, whether it is, you know, for a psychic or a tarot reading, you can do so there and I'm on, line here in the evenings and I will look forward to speak with you. So let's get on with what is up for this month. Hello Taurus, this is your July forecast and let me tell you though we got a hot month ahead of us. There's a lot of aspects so these transits can be a little challenging for many of us and so you know get your pen out. There's certain dates I'd really like you to look at so you can be prepared. It's going to be this kind of a month, all right? It's not going to be smooth. Some of you had a lot of relationship problems there in April, May. It was a big month. Phones rang off the hook, all right? Now, what's coming up this month could trigger some of that. It could be other situations, but we're going to look at your chart right now and see what you can expect. Um, one of the main things this month that I feel is going to be the most challenging is this full moon on the 9th. And this is because the full moon is going to be conjunct Pluto. And uh, in uh, your case, it's in the ninth house. So it has to do with travel, long distance people and faraway places. Um, it could be that you're out traveling. It has to do with education, visas, green cards, um, lawsuits, whatever it is. Uh, it's really going to be high lit for you here. The opposition that's coming to this full moon Pluto conjunction is the sun. So there's like this, this incredible uh, pull. It's coming from your third house, which has to do with communication, meaning communication might be a little off for you or your surroundings at this point. It can run very heated, and this is because Mars is very close to the sun in opposition to the moon and Pluto. So what do we have? We have disagreements. You might see something one way and, you know, whoever is involved might see something another way, right? Um, to make it even a little bit more touchy-feely is that Jupiter, which rules justice, fair, fairness, and balance, is kind of stuck, sandwiched in between this opposition. So it's coming up in a double square. So, and that Jupiter for you is in your sixth house. So it has to do with how you're looking at your day-to-day -day routine. It's also your work environment. We're not talking about your career per se, but your work environment and interaction, uh, perhaps with workers, coworkers, and so forth. So you'll just have to see where these uh, communications messages are coming up, but really do highlight uh, July 9th, all right? Uh, the new moon will be there in uh, zero degrees Leo. That will be later in the month, which is going to be much easier on you, which is going to be in the fourth house. This, I feel, is a good new moon to really lay down the seeds, all right, for new growth. 
the fourth house has to do with family, has to do with your foundation, has to do with who you are on the inside. Now, it's receiving great aspects up here to Saturn, which really brings in security, uh, roots, you know, Saturn's always looking out for you. Uh, in the long term, it's the eighth house for other people's money or money that uh, you're looking into as far as investments and so forth. The other um, good aspect this new moon has is your Uranus in the 12th house. So that's your subconsciousness, all right? And there's been a lot of changes going on with you. Uh, Taurus, if we're just going to spend a little moment here with Uranus in the 12th, because that's our subconsciousness. It's also our higher self. It's our spiritual self. A lot of you have been starting to feel over these last few years, even if you weren't a believer in the paranormal or should I say other dimensional realities, uh, that this has been opening up your channels. Your chakras have been activated. Now, on the, the um, under this aspect, should I say, there's an opening, there's a feeling of, yes, you are getting it, you're seeing something, and it's really adding to your overall makeup. But listen, as we start off the month, what is beautiful is that Venus is in your sign, as it was in June, so you're really having a time of your life where, where things are just really, really sweet. When we have Venus in the first house, that's the energy that goes up and out into the world, right? Uh, through our rising sign. And uh, this is how the world sees you as not only are you always beautiful Taurus, but you're even more so charismatic under this time here. So have a blast until the 6th. Then Venus will be moving into your second house. Money and income. You're going to be crunching numbers, looking at your income streams, how you can perfect it or change it up a little bit. Uh, some of you might see more money coming in, some might see more money going out, that you're spending more, because uh, Venus does love, you know, to spend money too. But it's also a romantic energy, and Venus in Taurus is really you connecting to your passions and so forth. When it moves into your second house, that is in the sign of Gemini. So you're going to find that your emotions are more talkative where you will be sharing more and bringing things out as far as what you feel your worth is all about, your self-worth, and that of whoever else is around you. Mars this month, it is in the, the third house for communication, short distance travel, as it was also in June. So some of you might have felt that you've had more of a need for road trips, getting out there, uh, not necessarily long distance, though that could be true uh, for many of you, but at least it's just getting up and out and breaking your daily routines. Mars is antsy to go out and experience, right? But let's talk about the hot, intense uh, challenges. Uh, it's not just that full moon on the night. And let me tell you why, though. On the 2nd of July, Mars and Pluto, they're going to be exact in opposition. So that's already being triggered before the full moon gets in there on the 9th, right? So whatever situation you're going to experience on July 2nd, it is powerful because it's powerhouse. Mars being dynamite, Pluto being nuclear, put the two of them together and ignite it. Well, you know, it's... it's definitely <laughs> to be felt, especially if there is ongoing conflicts that hasn't been settled. This would be the day where things will, you know, come to the surface, right? You want to make sure, though, since it is Mars in your third house, communication, that you won't fire up too quickly, all right? Try to moderate it because, you know, we don't want to create any blasts and craters and whatnot in our relationships. If you can moderate or try to lay low on the second, that will be better. And then bring it up. Whatever needs to be cleared, you can bring it up in the aftermath. On the fourth, though, communication is still somewhat difficult because Mercury is communication and Uranus is square it. So here we have another aspect which I feel can go a little haywire. Why? Because there might be a situation that you're not aware of that might be thrown into the mix. Uranus will always come with the unexpected, which is great when we have good aspects because then we can be surprised in a good way. But when it's square, well, probably not so much, right? 
Um, this is really bringing you back to Earth because though the Sun is in harmony to Neptune, which is your high ideals, the things that you long for, what you wish for, it's you putting out all your intentions for peace, love, happiness, and all that. It is difficult. On the fifth, see, we still have the effect of the Mars-Pluto opposition. We still have the lingering uh, communication of this uh, Mercury-Uranus conflict. And uh, on the fifth, well, the Sun, which is you, is square now, Jupiter with uh, which what uh, shows us what is fair and not fair. And so, of course, this is reacting and it's, it's wanting, it's justice. So you might still feel here that you're a little bit upset, all right? And this is already nearly towards uh, the, the end of the first week of July. I feel on the 7th you can actually get some headway. Uh, as far as uh, making some amends, you know, and uh, hearing that things are softening up a little bit. But don't let your guard totally down because on the 9th, here we have the Sun and Pluto opposing each other, just like Mars and Pluto did, all right? So that's going to reignite what took place on the 2nd. And uh, there's a lot of force in this uh, Pluto opposition. Uh, we just want to be careful that we don't feel too righteous because that will trigger and set off all the other party's defense mechanisms and then we've lost communication. And remember, the ninth is also the full moon, which is conjuncting that Pluto, so all our emotions are really riveted up. Think about, you know, a volcano. Things that have been suppressed will come up. That's what Pluto does. It purges. And, of course, a full moon, what is that? That's the sun and the moon in opposition, too. So your inner and outer self, your, your conscious self and your emotional self will also be feeling like you're at this tug of war. So it's hot, it's intense. <laughs> there might be guilt trips, power trips, and all that. So there's a lot of triggers. So even before, if you're listening to this in June, I would say once you hit July, come back, re-listen, get the dates down. If you didn't write them all down there in June when you were listening at first, okay? Because this can really be helpful for you as how to navigate. On the 14th, there is a little bit more coming in where you might feel again, okay? Let's kiss and make up. All right, this is Mercury and Jupiter trying to find a midpoint where both can be happy, just like you did on the 7th. However, it's not really going to hold too long. Just as you're thinking, okay, now we're good, what takes place? There is a new situation coming in. Talk about a wavy month, all right? And this is, and I'll tell you why, it's uh, Venus and Neptune. They're square, so that is definitely a signature of disappointment. Uh, disappointment where things really didn't go through the way you had hoped. Now you were hoping on the 14th, but by the 17th, a situation is going to take place and you're going to go, what? Right? Venus and Neptune, it, it is promises that are not fulfilled. Same day. What is triggering this? Why wasn't it fulfilled? Well, Mars, which has to do with action and direction um, and where we put our power to fulfill, whatever I promised could be, Uranus is coming in from the left and it is exposing uh, either a um, change of direction, change of heart, uh, there could be a delay or something coming into the mix, and it's going to upset what you had now planned, all right? Mars and Uranus also can be very accident prone, so be aware, uh, especially since Venus and Neptune are square too, so your mind might be off here thinking of why is this happening what does he mean or what does she mean why why did this happen you're trying to figure out and then suddenly boom you can stub your toe that kind of thing it's just a little accident prone because we're not focusing on the 18th 19th okay we're doing a little better so there is you know a blue sky behind those storm clouds this I feel is going to allow you to settle down uh, for maybe the first time throughout July, all right, um, to
to come to some agreements and it's Venus and Jupiter. Jupiter in your sixth, Venus in your second. So we can see how this is really going to uh, help you look at the values that you hold. We're not talking necessarily money. Now this could definitely be a good money aspect, which Venus and Jupiter always is. So, you know, for uh, some of you, hopefully for most of you, you'll be receiving a check or money or uh, something coming in. But sometimes it's also an expense going out. But then again, it's a happy expense. It's something that you want, something that you desire, something that you can now accomplish, which is great. On a romantic level though, uh, or a personal level, it's more sharing the worth and the values of who you are and having it finally being heard, understood, embraced. So you're feeling that, yes, this communication, which is now Mercury and Saturn, they're in trying, okay? So Mercury's communication, Saturn's grounding it into that new reality, is also being heard and valued. So I think finally, you know, here in the third week, that things can come together in July. Um, but you're a little bit, you know, wary. It's like, is this going to last? Or when is the next minefield going to explode? Because it's been touch and go, touch and go, touch and go, right? Where's that next mine? You might be feeling that. But I can see how you're at least relaxing, starting to trust again, and we're ending uh, the month on a so much better note from the 24th onwards, straight through the end of the month, where we have... The Sun and Mars, they're conjunct, so you're up and running, you're energetically feeling good, you're goal-oriented, and you're back on track. The 30th, Venus and Uranus is going to bring you some unexpected, pleasant surprise. And so this is one of the good ones, because it's a good, harmonious aspect for you. I feel that this is something that you're thinking, finally, you know, we, got a, we have regained a new grip on things. So... Listen, I can tell you it's going to be a busy month for me. Phones will ring off the hook, but you know what? You can do this, Taurus, because why? You're strong. You know your worth. You know who you are. You know what you'll put up with. You know what you won't put up with. This month will show you exactly what those things are, right? So listen, this is what I have for you now, and I will see you next month. Bye now.